What's up you guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to more Train Sim World 2. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Caltrain Baby Bullet locomotive um, along with the Bombardier class carriages. So we're on a particular scenario here called Bay Area Breakdown and we are starting off in San Francisco here. Now the first thing that you can see that we have an issue with is actually a glitchy um, thing here where we're sort of stuck in position. Now I need to try and remember how to get us out of here. Has that done it? There we go. I don't know whether everybody else experiences the same problem here, but for some reason, um, for myself, I end up getting stuck there every time when this machine loads in. So we're going to run now to the front of the train. And yeah, guys, I mean, apart from that little hiccup there, this is a beautiful loco. Um, it's beautifully modelled. As you can see, the sunshine there, the California sunshine shining off these carriages. You can hear the sound here. This beautiful engine purring away. So there you go. We'll take a quick look at this one here, like that. Stunning model. Let's see if we can climb up. Oh my days. Let's get in the other side. There we go. Get this door closed. It's kind of loud out there. Let's take a seat. And we'll get this train set up. And as you can see here, it's, it's a nice air-conditioned passenger train. We're going to get this thing set up. So, even though it's told us to sit down, I find it easier just to stand up to switch these things on. Engine run. Um, the fuel pump and the fuel generator. So they're all on nicely there. We also want to be putting in the, um, oh, if we can actually do it, cut off valve to passenger. We're going to insert the reverser. We're going to leave that in neutral just for the moment and we're going to get the doors open. Uh, we're on the left side there, aren't we? Let's have a look. Oh, if we can actually get the right control, unlock left. There we go. Right, let's have a look. So there we go. The doors are open. Listen to the hum of these locos. Got three here, we've got another baby bullet over here. And a couple of the standard sort of San Francisco trains, if I could remember the name of them off the top of my head. This is this baby bullet class here is the MP36PH slash 3C. I don't know what all that means, but it certainly is a, a nice one. It comes as part of a DLC pack, which is an add-on to the Peninsula Corridor pack which is now a preserved route on Trainsim World 2. It also comes with these special uh, Bombardier class carriages, which are a bi-level carriage. As you can see, there's an upstairs and a downstairs. And as you may see as part of this scenario, you can actually drive the train from the back as well once you're heading in the opposite direction, similar to the other uh, San Francisco locos. Get this window open, why not? And we'll get the doors locked. There we go. Should we should be all locked there and ready to go. Let's have a look. There we go, doors all locked in. Uh, we're going to switch the uh, reverser to forward and then we're going to get a bit of power on here. Hopefully this thing's going to start moving for us with no, t no issues. Hmm. Well, it isn't moving. I don't think the brakes are off. Hold on a sec. Independent brake, that is off. Yeah, the automatic brake needed to be on release. There we go. Are we able to move now? Let's power down. Let's try again. There we go, now we're moving. A bit more power on. Steez it down again. Yeah, we don't want to be breaking the speed limit. 10 mile per hour speed limit coming out of this station. Listen to that engine, eh? Just in cruise now. It's coasting along. This thing is a beautifully powerful locomotive. Not the biggest loco on the San Francisco line in terms of passenger trains, but certainly a joy to drive. 
as you can see we've got a fairly long commuter passenger train here today one thing that's interesting about the american train system currently is that there is no high speed train system similar to within other countries like we have here in the uk and of course germany france so there we go so as you can see there at the back that's the um the driver's seat for when you're going in the opposite direction i'll try and get a better bit of a better look at that one once we actually um get in that one you'll be able to see it much better so i think as part of this run what we're going to do is go uh, to a certain station and then we're going to have to come back and i'll show you that as we go obviously switch to a nice outside view again here and get a nice uh, view of this train as it's coming around this corner Just in there, power notch one here, just to keep it moving as we're going around this corner here. I do hope we've got the brakes set up properly there. It sounds like it's screeching a little bit, but um, it gives me a bit of confidence that we're in notch one and it's still moving fairly proficiently forward. Shame this screen doesn't really do anything. Uh, there is some other American locos where you do have to do a few things to set it up on the screen to get the brakes running properly. But obviously here we have the mechanical controls for the cut-off valve. Um, I think that's the only thing that we've got really that we need to ensure is correct. Oh, we don't have our headlights on. Uh, we'll get those on bright. Uh, we don't need headlights rear on. Maybe we could do with a reading light if we go into a tunnel. Um, I think that'll do for now. Okay, we can power up a little bit. We've got a 75 mile per hour speed limit coming up. We're currently in a 25 mile per hour zone. And just blowing off the horn there as we cross over the, uh, the, the railway crossing. American trains tend to blow off the horn quite a lot. I think that's mainly due to the fact that the that the actual railway itself is much more open in the UK it's sort of much more enclosed and more difficult to access is where the American uh, railroad seems to be much easier to sort of walk over or cross and you hear a lot more sort of horn as a result we have got another one coming here There we go, great fun. We will switch the bell off though because that's going to get annoying pretty quick. So it looks like we've got a 40 mile per hour speed limit here going into a 75 soon. Maybe just ease down a little bit there. Just to stop us from um, over speeding. Try and maintain speed though pretty well as we head into this tunnel. Yeah, I'm glad we've got the reading light on there because otherwise we wouldn't be able to see anything. So yeah, 75 mile per hour speed limit now, we'll just accelerate up. We've got 3.7 miles to go to our next stop, so plenty of time. Plenty of time before we need to worry about stopping. Um, so we've got an automatic brake here as well, which is a, a kind of a welcome um, relief. Looks like that train's stopped there for us. That will be heading in the opposite direction. We're thundering along now, to be fair. See if we can switch to an external camera. Oh, it's not allowing us. It doesn't allow you to switch to an external camera when you're in tunnels or you're in an enclosed sort of environment. Yeah, I think that's due to the previous issues with the Amtrak train, where if you switch to the external view, it would just really mess up the camera, potentially crash the game, things of that nature. So anyway guys, we're on full throttle here, we're on uh, power 8. Should be able to switch to outside now. There we go. You can hear the power from that engine. Beautiful, beautiful. I was never a huge fan of American trains until I started playing this game. No, I really like them. I, I just I see them as being like 
really super powerful trains like with loads of um loads of potential for pulling massive loads even though you often see multiple locos at the front of a huge goods train in america just to give that extra stability sometimes a loco in the middle as well sometimes one at the end but it's it's not uncommon to see three locos at the front of a goods train pulling just simply due to the weight these down on the power here we are heading slightly downhill as well now so i think we can afford to notch this into neutral and just allow it to cruise like this there's another one there another baby bullet just went flying by so yeah guys this is an adult add-on dlc so if you've got trains in world 2 not only will you need to have access to peninsula corridor as a route but you'd also need to then buy the dlc on top of that if you want to drive this train um we've got about a mile to go until our next stop so i'm going to start easing the brakes on here i don't want to overshoot this one we'll keep the throttle in idle uh, get a bit more brakes on i think don't panic the head end power has failed focus on getting to Milbray, and you can investigate the fault when we get there okay well it looks like we're going through bayshaw so we don't need to stop here we'll keep the power up we're going to need it if there's an issue with the power generally speaking um we're gonna have to keep our power on in order to maintain our speed here as you can see we're on full power here and we're only gradually creeping up in speed now I'm going to try and get back up to line speed if possible. So we're going to go thundering through this one. There we go. The onboard conductor has informed the passengers that this train will be terminating at Milbray. Okay, well, looks like we're stopping there. For now though guys, let's keep soldiering on. 7.2 miles to go to our next stop. Oh look at that goods train there. Well some goods uh, goods carriages at least. So yeah guys, I'm gonna be doing a couple of um couple of videos based on the peninsula corridor route to show you some of the additional trains that you can drive on this route including the main trains as well i'm going to cover off the um the little shunter train as well well i say little it's not really little is it any american train isn't small even the sort of a uh, switching train is a decent size so we'll probably do that next and then we'll go back to the caltrain um main loco that's included with the peninsula corridor pack we'll take a look at that one and we'll also take a look at the goods train as well it's included so you, there's quite a few options in terms of different locos that are available to drive on this route and why not it's a stunning route obviously caltrain have been involved in terms of um, providing the sign off for the license for the models and you do get some nice trains to drive let's take another look at this one from the outside nice lean there going into that corner oh we've left the bell on there we'll switch that off there we go Guys, I want to take this time to ask if you're not already subscribed to the channel. It would really mean the world to me if you could go ahead and do that. If you enjoy this video, please do leave me a like. Just hit that thumbs up. It really would mean the world to me. Oh, we need to start slowing down a little bit here, though. Seems like we're going a little bit too fast. We'll, do, we'll apply a little bit more brakes there. Seems like the speed, on, speed uh, restriction there dropped, but now it's back up to... Um, you're hitting by the looks of things so we get the power back on there we go as you can see there is a seat for a, a second driver as well, second engineer 
on this one it is just us. One thing I will note about this particular locomotive in terms of the design is the visibility that you have to look outside. I mean you've got all these windows here, you've got a beautiful big um, front set of screens here to be able to look out of. Just hit the horn again as we pass through this station. There we go, and switch the bell off, there we go. But look guys, I mean the visibility as you look around. I don't know another train where you can look around and see as much as this one. It just seems like that was one of the prime design features when they designed this one. I, I could probably do with doing a little bit of research and looking into seeing whether this was a design feature because it certainly seems to be that way. And as you can see guys, we have no problem being able to see the scenery here. Or lack of, as we're passing through this industrial area, we see some of these uh, graffiti there on the walls. And some of the construction vehicles here as well. Obviously a heavy industrial part. We've got about 3.1 3 miles to go to our next stop. We'll just keep going like this, nice and steady. I think we do want to ease down because we've got an amber light coming up as well. We can have a nice shot here as we head up here. Remember this section. See if we can get the camera a little bit in front here. There we go. Flying through this station here. So nice, eh? 2.4 miles to go to our next stop. As we fly over this sort of bridge area, this flyover section. See us uh, quite far into the distance there. Even into the misty sort of distance as you can see those houses back there. Other buildings. Two miles to go to our next stop. Hey, I really like driving this train, guys. All of these handles, I mean... I know it's just aesthetics because you kind of, you know, I'm driving using the uh, the buttons on the controller, but even having said that, it just it just is a very sort of um, solid feel to it. We'll just get the brakes on a little bit more heavier now. So you can hear the sort of um, turbines firing up there in order to generate the braking power required that we've requested there with the handle. So we want to make sure that we're sort of um, rolling our speed off little by little as we come into Millbrae here. We don't want to end up in a situation where we overshoot the station. Um, let's take a look on the map. So there you go, that gives you an idea of how far away we are. Which isn't very far at all really if you think about it. Just sort of keep cruising like this. And in a little while we're going to start putting a bit more brake on. We do have a red light coming up. So I think just putting a little bit of brakes on is, is a prudent thing here. A station is before the red light though, 0.7 to the station, 1.1 to the red light, so we shouldn't have a problem with that red light. But I think just easing down on the speed here, just rolling it down nice and smooth like we are. 37 miles per hour seems about right coming in here. We might have to get a little bit heavier on the brakes soon because as we said, we've got a lot of weight behind us here. I mean, if we look on this screen here, it should give us an idea. So, yeah, a decent amount of weight there, as you can see from that screen. 453.7 tonnes, 190.8 yards. Decent bulk to this train, that's for sure. And this is the one they call the baby, so... Yep, yeah, it is what it is, right? Okay, let's get some more brakes on. 80% brakes, or 60% sorry, he's down to 39%. Can hear the, the brake, the engine like firing up there as we sort of hit the brakes. Bit more. There we go. Right, I think we can just cruise a little bit now. 
now that we're going this sort of speed although you do need to be careful with this train even though when you're going slow if you try and apply brakes um, heavily it doesn't really stop as easy as what you would think you kind of it's more of a slow and smooth sort of um, stop that's required oh that's gonna be a nice one there we go get into um, full service there and get the doors open hey that was a good stop guys I must say even if I do say so myself as you can see there this is our stopping point um, and I'd say that's about perfect about perfect I mean it's not exactly perfect is it could roll forward about a meter but I'm not gonna split hairs over that that's for sure so we're just loading the passengers let's take a quick look around this station here as you can see beautifully designed it's got a nice bridge going over um, we've got another two lines there and then one over this side with the they all seem to have the third rail these two on this side don't so these are the diesel electro lines and listen to that I just love that rumble of the of the diesel engine so beautiful let's see if we can uh, close the doors oh we pressed the wrong thing there we go there we go doors closed off so with the passengers safely off the train focus on trying to get the head end power back on all right so let's jump back behind the engineer's seat and see what it means i think we're going to end up switching some things here let's step up here and see what this is all about so hep on um let's press this looks as though the engine has, has overheated and has failed completely the train will have to be taken out of service and diagnosed our closest inspection sidings will be san francisco okay that's fine so it looks like we're going to be taking the train out of service so we'll take a seat we will switch the reverser to neutral we're going to switch the um the cutoff valve to out like so Um, and all switches to off so we want to switch the engine run to off and this one uh, which is the field generate sorry generator field and finally if I can actually hit it the control and fuel pump and finally we're going to take out the uh, master key or the reverser handle as it's called here so there we go we're going to change ends now so we'll jump out Let's close this door if we can. There we go. I had to sort of close it from up there. It wouldn't let me do it from the floor. Right, so let's run back. Let's run down to this bottom end here. And we're going to be driving the train from the other end now in order to get it back to the sidings. And I'm trying to think if we're going to have to set up kind of our track in terms of our switches in order to get us into the correct siding. It might do it automatically for us. Okay, so this is the door that we want to be in here. There we go. And we'll close this one as well. And then we'll head up here. And we want to be in here like this. Like so. Take our seat here. And then what we'll do is um, we'll switch on these switches. So we've got fuel pump and control. Oops, it is. Fuel pump i can actually get to it there we go fuel pump and control we're going to do our generator field and our engine run on we'll insert that handle there as well and then we'll go to our cut off i believe oh no engine run we'll press that and where's our switches so cut out valve cut off valve sorry should be in and we want to release the brakes I'm going to set our reverser to forward and we'll get some power on hopefully that brakes fully released now 
should be moving forward. There we go. Okay, let's get a bit of power on. We can't hear the engine from this end. But we can certainly um, get this thing moving, that's for sure. So it looks like we've got a 12 mile run back to the San Francisco siding. So I think we'll just get on full power here. Get this thing moving as quickly as we can. So yeah, so we're driving from the end of the um, the by level. Um, uh, so we're driving from the end of the by level carriage here. So these Bombardier by level carriages are kind of special to look at, really. They're kind of unique in a lot of ways. I mean, I've never seen anything like this in the UK, but certainly they help to um, get people to work and all sorts of other things. Okay, we're gonna just be careful on the speed there as we're sort of passing over and switching over onto the other track. 50 mile per hour is the speed limit there. And then we're going to go up to 65 in 1.7 miles. Um, let's just get the power on, I think. Well, it's actually switched us to 80 mile per hour speed limit now, so I'm not too sure what that's all about. I didn't see a switch there going forward to get us up to that speed. I might have missed it. But as you can see, we've got a nice little digital readout of the speed here. So if you did want to switch off the heads-up display, you could read from there. Something that I've been meaning to give a go, actually, to get a bit more re realism involved. I think it's a good idea to attempt to tri dri drive one of these trains without any sort of um, heads-up display or any sort of um, signal warning slash speed warning and just to kind of read it as you go along. Hey, let, let me guy, let me know in the uh, comment section, you guys, if you've tried that, and if you've had success or failure as a result of attempting that. So we're going back over this flyover area again. Probably heading through the station here. I would have thought. Oh, wow, we're, we're flying along now at 70, nearly 75 miles per hour. Let's see if we can get a bit ahead with the camera here, and we'll take a look here. Stand, we'll do it as if we stood on this station as the train comes through. Wow, look at that. That's really flying along. We're actually breaking the speed limit as well, so we'll just ease down on the power. As you can see there, our loco on the back doing all the pushing. We are heading slightly downhill as well here. I think a little bit of um, reverse throttle. Cast as a sort of well, it's not a very powerful brake. It's useful for the loco more than anything. It's not exactly really that great at slowing down the, the main body of the train, though, when you, when you apply the brake through the throttle. Making pretty good progress here, guys. I like the way this train leans. I wasn't aware of that, actually. I've just noticed it. Take a look at the loco here as it comes by. Yeah, there you go, a nice little lean going on there. We probably should have switched those headlights off though. Have we got headlights on here? No, we don't. There we go. Um, okay, bright and auxiliary will do. So it seems we're going to be going through some tunnels, so we might as well have the bright lights on to be able to see as far as possible. Okay, we're back up to um, 80 mile per hour speed limit here by the looks of things. So we'll just open up the, uh, the power setting, get that on full, and get this thing flowing along as quickly as possible. So here we go, guys. Do let me know how you're enjoying the uh, tra channel content at the moment. So there's a couple of new games that I'll be looking to cover over the next few weeks, things that I haven't touched upon previously, and I hope that, that that's interesting to you. I don't really want to mention what they are now as a spoiler, but if you keep an eye on the channel, 
you hit the subscription button and turn on the bell notification you'll be able to check those games out as I cover them some interesting kind of simulator slash I don't know how to describe it not simulator games per se just oh man I wouldn't want to sort of give too much away let's say the kind of simulation games with a little bit of a twist to them let's put it that way and hope that sounds interesting because these games I haven't played and I just want to check them out with you guys first time which is often the case it's often the case when I play games sometimes I start a game and I kind of do the, do the first couple of little tasks and then I think oh that'd be something that would be great to explore on the channel so I'll just put it down and that's certainly the case with some other games as well that I have that I want that I want to cover and I hope that we have a great time together and um, taking a look at those I did do a couple of little test streams as well just to see how that would work on Twitch and yeah it's something which I'll be looking to explore more in the future I think at the moment just with my work schedule it might be a little bit difficult to do that but I think in the future at some point um, it could be fun certainly had a great time with the um, with the streams that I have done and it was great to interact with people live as well and that was a, a, a great deal of fun so yeah if you want to give me a follow on twitch I wouldn't mind that at all and there's a couple of videos on there of the streams that I've done so far I think there's two or three I think I think there's three altogether so I think we've got a train sim world one and I think we've got an on the road truck simulator one and then there's a sudden strike one as well which I think is still up which yeah please do go ahead and check those out let me know what you think Right, for now guys, we're going to get the power on again. I mean, we've got a fair few miles to go before we get to San Francisco. I think just keeping the power on is a good idea here. We've got an 80 mile per hour speed limit. Uh, although even with the full power on here, you can see that we are struggling to accelerate at any kind of a decent speed. We have an amber light coming up by the looks of things. And I think maybe easing this down, just keeping it in idle, I think is probably a good idea at this stage. Just see what happens with this light. I'm hoping that it's not too um, problematic. We've got an amber there. Oh, then we've got a red. Okay. Uh, maybe a bit of break. Oh no, it's green. And then an amber again. Switch to amber again. See, that's saying red there. That's very odd. Oh, there we go. There's our amber. I'm just looking for a red so there's another amber there not too sure how this signaling system works if they're all going to be kind of amber ok well let's see how we get on so we're on sort of released brake I think try and build up a little bit more speed again uh, we've got a 70, 75 mile per hour speed limit coming up in about 2 miles so we'll keep the power on here keep this thing moving as best as possible and I think it won't be too long before we're in San Francisco now we've got 3.5 miles to go so keep it cruising as best as possible here it's like we're going back into our tunnels again might as well close that door Hey, anyway guys let me know what your experiences of driving this route if you've driven it yourself if you do if you did have that glitch the same glitch that I had at the start of this route uh, it only seems to be in this one scenario where you sort of cordoned off in that way for some reason at the start and I don't I've never experienced it on any other scenario apart from this one so 
yeah i mean let me know guys if you've experienced that as well um, what are your favorite trains to drive on this route as well i think the baby bullet generally speaking is a favorite although it might not be yours let me know in the comment section let me know generally speaking uh, what, what are your favorite american routes as well i know we've got cane creek available now as well so that will be one that i'll be looking to cover in the future on this this channel at some point Um, we're going to start slowing down now. We've got two miles to go to our stop. Let's roll this speed off pretty good here. We've got a 40 mile per hour restriction coming up. It's probably due to a switch. We probably need to switch tracks. Because we're heading to a siding, I think. Let's take a quick glance here, see where we're going. So yeah, we're going to head off to, into this side here, instead of going into the station. So we'll just keep it nice and steady, I think, about 40 here. We're not in any rush. We don't have a time restriction to get into this side in. If we, were, if we had passengers on board, um, we'd be looking to, obviously, try and get to our station on time. But in this case, because we're considered to be broken down and requiring maintenance, then we're just going to keep it cruising like this, I think. So yeah, just a one mile to go now, guys. Just keeping it nice and steady like this. Ease down slightly just to keep our speed under 40 as we're coming up to that restriction now. There we go. We are going slightly downhill, so we're going to take account for that as well. Although we are flat now. Nice and flat. That's the way we like it because it means that we can just maintain speed just by cruising like this. Uh, we've got a 25 mile per hour speed limit coming up now. I'm going to slow it down a bit more. Take it nice and easy going in here. There we go. And a little bit more. Just to roll those top couple of mile per hour off like so. There we go. Okay, so we're nicely cruising along here. So you can see we're sort of going the same sort of speed as that car there. It was most likely going 30 mile per hour. As we're coming off here, we're switching off into our siding. And we're not too far from stopping here, about 60 yards. 600 yards, sorry. Keep rolling like this, nice and steady. Nice and easy. Roads are kind of empty here. I can't imagine that this is what it's like in real life. I think San Francisco, from well, at least from when I was there, which was, well, it was over 10 years ago when I was there uh, with my then girlfriend, who is now my wife. But yeah, it was it was very busy, very busy city. Um, beautiful, beautiful weather. Well, we're, we're breaking the speed limit by quite a bit there now. We want to be down to 10. And we've got a stop coming up as well. Right, let's just roll the brake off and let this thing cruise in. Looks like we've got a five mile per hour speed limit here, actually. There we go, just take her down a little bit like that. Nice and easy. Switched the light off there by accident. How I did that. And here we are. This is the power unit, the workhorse, currently at the back. You can see we're rolling into this side in here very nicely. Yeah, not too far to go now, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. As I say, guys, please do leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. If you haven't, of course, please do let me know why. If there's anything that you'd like to see on the channel, any routes you'd like to see, any locos you'd like to see, 
any other simulation games you'd like to see or any games in general that you think could be of benefit to yourselves and anybody else watching please do let me know right let's get this thing ready to stop here because we're nicely in this side in here we've got a buffer stop there coming up as well nicely slowed down here and a little bit more there we go nicely stopped so lock down the train here and head over to the offices on the far side of the line okay so what we'll do is we'll just get this brake on full service here we'll switch if it lets us we'll switch this into neutral we will um, the throttle is in idle this automatic brake needs to be in handle off there we go we'll remove the reverser handle and our brake cut off valve should be in out like that we're now going to power down which is if we can actually get it engine run off and generator field off and fuel pump and control off so that's it guys that's us done as I say guys I really hope you've enjoyed this episode um, if we can actually get out here um, if you've enjoyed do leave me a like I really hope to catch you guys again soon we're going to jump off this train and we'll close this door if it, can, if it allow us to uh, maybe not those buttons don't seem to work there either I'm surprised at that to be honest with you is he going to let us close it here? Oh, I guess not. All right, okay. Well, we'll it'll end this mission here and see how we got on. I think because I've done this mission before, or this scenario, as I say, it'll probably um, it'll probably won't give us a medal because I think I've already got the gold for this one. I think. But let's see how we did anyway. We're certainly going to get some points. That's for sure. There we go. Nicely done there. So yeah, we only broke the speed limit a couple of times. Um, I don't think I scored as highly there as what I did last time. But as you can see, our stopping accuracy was pretty good. And yeah, we generally drove under, under the speed limit. Although there was a couple of times when we went over though, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed this one today. Thanks for coming through. And I'll catch you again soon.